So this is the last part um, of the coffee table build. This is kind of a hodgepodge of a lot of stuff because I was rushing to finish this because I was already extremely behind schedule. So in order to align this table lift, they give you instructions, but I thought it would be easiest because I haven't attached this bottom piece of wood yet to just do everything from the underside. So if I had one big critique of these lifts are there's no mechanism to keep them closed and the springs are quite strong. So you could see I had a little piece of wire holding it closed. I could cut that it kind of rose into place. I can mark some of the holes with a screw from the underside and then I could lift it up and attach everything. I really wish that these came with a locking mechanism. It would make life much easier. My reveal shifted a little bit, you can see. So I actually went to the underside. I only put two screws in to start. I went to the underside, shifted it a little bit. Um, screwed them all into place and it worked fine. That's kind of par for the course when doing hardware There's always going to be some sort of finagling um, Involved in this and then once I got the reveal about where I wanted it to be um, Like I said, I put all the hardware in there This has a bunch of holes and then I'm gonna have to take all of this apart to stain it and then apart again to move it So with a pencil I marked where this was so it would be easy to realign it and then I could start up, I can move on to something else. So you'll notice at this point I'm still wearing a hoodie. By the time this table was delivered, it was it was practically um, the end of May, I think. So this took me quite a while to do. I was working on multiple other things in the shop at the time. The woman who ordered this from me was hands down one of the nicest clients I've ever had. She was super chill about all the delays. So I'm gonna start working on this side, which will have a table lift as well as um, some storage so what I decided to do was to put um, you could see a piece of plywood there to, to um, lock out that backside it will also act as an attachment for other uh, hardware and then I have to cut this tabletop in half well not in half it's about in th uh, one third and two thirds that was a little nerve-wracking I did it on the table saw because that's gonna give me my cleanest cut but you can kind of see how this inside worked out. You could also see where my one panel shifted a little bit. So I do have some bald spots on the bottom. This wasn't a huge concern because you're never going to see it on the table lifts. You'll only see it on the storage lift and even then it wasn't that big of an issue. So what I'm going to do to finish up these sides is I'm going to put um, about a 3 30 seconds piece of veneer on these edges. So in order to do that, on this one side, you can see it was pretty, The where I cut it was almost lined up perfectly with the lattice work, but not close enough. So I just took some leftover MDF, I cut them into about eighth inch thick strips, and then I could just cut them into pieces and fill in those voids. If you're putting any sort of material, especially thin material on an edge like this, you really want it to have contact with a full flat surface. If you left these voids here, um, you would see divots in your pieces, and the material is actually thin enough that you could potentially poke through in those spots. But like I said, I just I just added these pieces to both of those. This is that, that thinner veneer, but it's not as thin as a veneer. This is a, a thicker veneer I had in the shop, and I could just tape it into place. Once this dries and I sand it and clean it up, um, it's almost a, a non-noticeable edge. I didn't want a huge edge where that seam was. I want it to be pretty streamlined. Um, so this is how I decided to, to finish up those two edges. So then at this point, like I said, I had decided not to put that false front on my drawers, which means all of my uh, drawer slides are too far back. In order to quickly fix that, you can see I just clamped a straight edge against the slide, removed the hardware, and I could pull it about the three-quarter inch forward that I needed it to be. You will see at the end of the video, because this is only going into quarter-inch ply, I replaced all of these screws with bolts so they don't have a point sticking down the bottom. And then this is what those two pieces look like lined up and I could start doing the hardware for, for the lift. For this, I just got two inset drawer hinges. Um, they're the European style ones, which I prefer, and I'm just gonna use that to, to attach this lift. So I put my marks um, pretty much where I wanted them to be. 
And then for this piece, like I said, at this point, I was making a lot of this sturdy but detachable in case I had it was too heavy to lift. I could remove a bunch of stuff. So I don't use pocket hole screws a lot in this channel, but I will use them for, for necessary tasks. And that was the way I decided to attach that. You could see I completely was not paying attention and I drilled the cup on the wrong side. It's supposed to go on the lift, not where I had put it. So in order to fix that, I am just, I, I was actually doing a laser engraving video at the time and I just cut two oak plugs that fit perfectly in those holes and I can, can fix that. On the plywood, it was easy. I just flipped it around. You're never going to see it. But on the oak um, tabletop, I had to plug them. So that was pretty convenient use for, for those laser engravers and I could um, plug those up. This is not ideal. You will notice this repair a little bit just because of the grain, but you will never, the only time you'll ever see these two plugs is when you lift up the storage tray and you really have to be looking for them to see them. So it was a somewhat quick fix. It was a really stupid mistake. I just wasn't paying attention. And then I could clean those up and uh, put the cup on the, the right side. So that is what that looks like back in place. And then I could put this, this piece of plywood back in place as well. And then I could drill the cup in the, the cup hole hinge in the tabletop and attach that like that. Once again, I specifically did not put these these uh, the plywood base in these because it would, I knew it would be much easier to work from the underside without a base, which it was. So if you drill these in the right spot, it's very easy to do. You can see it's it's pretty simple stuff. These uh, inset hinges align this perfectly. They're really strong and sturdy, and this they extend I think to 110 degrees, so the lid holds itself in place without any extra hardware. And these hinges have I think three different adjustments as well. So once I stain this and put everything back in place, I could I can fine tune that reveal. Now for the other side, they did not want as heavy duty uh, table lifting mechanism. The one on the other side is like a $200 lift. So we went with these cheaper single lifts, but I quickly found that they were a real pain to align because they're two separate units. So what I decided to do in order to make my life easier and for this to have longer longevity um, when she's using it was to make a wooden base that I could attach the two pieces to so they'll work better as one unit versus trying to attach them to the sides. This t uh, coffee table is fairly square. It's not perfectly square. So I was having an issue where I was measuring from corners and edges and it wasn't perfectly aligning. And then these weren't lifting at the same rate and then they weren't lowering the same and it was just turning into a nightmare. So I had some, some scrap wood lying around. It's not the prettiest thing, but once again, it's something you're not really gonna see. I cut some thick rabbits on one side just to make this joint a little sturdier. Cause like I'm saying, these this springs in these lifts have a lot of tension on them and they will whack you pretty good. So I wanted this to be pretty strong because all of that torque and force of lifting this up and down, I didn't want to have to rely on butt joints. So glued it together, I checked to make sure everything was square and I let that set up. While I was doing that, I could permanently attach my drawer fronts. These are all dry. I sanded them. Um, I'm attaching these with a little bit of glue, which I said early in the video, I don't love attaching hardwood to plywood with glue, but this stuff is really thin and I spent all that time putting strong joints in it. So I don't think I'm going to have a huge issue. And then a while ago, someone recommended one of these pin nailers versus a brad nailer for finishing work. And he was right. It was pretty cool. You don't see any hardware. So then I went and replaced that the edge dowels there and my camera died, but you can see, I just pulled the screws out. Um, drilled three eighth inch holes and plug those with dowels. I put a pre-stain on this. Oak doesn't necessarily need a pre-stain, but I'm using hardwood and plywood so the, the grain pattern's a little bit different. But as you can see why I like to use it is it will 
very easily show you where you still have glue residue um, when you put it on oak it shows up as like a, a pale whitish mark and sometimes those things I just can't see them because they are smaller so I'll put a pre stain on it to even out the grain but it also highlights all of the glue spots I missed I can remove them reapply the pre stain and move on for this I'm staining the entire thing in the round I believe this was a weathered oak it's kind of a brownish gray color that's actually quite pretty and I put that on everything um, let it dry for about 10-15 minutes wiped off the excess and then I let this stuff dry for about three or four days if you try and put a top coat uh, I don't care what the can says they, they tell you you could put a top coat on much quicker if you put a top coat on too early especially an oil-based top coat it will lift up the stain and I've had to completely redo pieces because of that so f going forward after that one time that happened to me I usually let this stuff dry for at least 72 hours so then to finish this up, at this point I was deciding what I was permanently attaching and I knew I wanted to permanently attach that one base, so I did. And then you could see I drilled some holes through um, this table lift to attach this to my plywood, uh, my plywood, my two by four frame. They want you attached to attach it from the underside of the top or the bottom. I was a little nervous about having this floating in this frame, but once everything was screwed in place, it was actually quite strong. I was I was pleasantly surprised. And then I'm also going to permanently attach um, the base here as well. So I obviously had to mark where the arms were going to be for the lift, and I had to cut those out so I had clearance. Um, I decided to permanently attach all this quarter inch sheeting because it wasn't going to be super heavy. I knew at this point I would have to use a hand truck and hand trucks are amazing tools. Um, I've moved anything from smaller pieces of furniture to refrigerators pretty much by myself with them. So, so I put a little more weight on this than I could probably carry knowing that I was get she had told me I knew where it was going in the house I knew mostly it, it, it would be hand truckable so that's what I decided to do and then all of this stuff is just getting um, glued and bratted in place so those were the sections I had in the back and like I said I don't love the seams but um most of those parts you aren't going to see. The top coat for this is a water-based top coat. I've been using it quite frequently. It's from um, Arma Seal. It's one of their more expensive top coats. It's pretty simple. You put it on. You put probably two or three coats on per day depending how warm it is outside. I lightly sand with like 400 grit sandpaper in between coats. By the time you're done it's a really nice strong finish and then I could start putting all this stuff back together I like to make sure everything goes back together which seems a little ridiculous because I'm gonna have to completely take it apart again to deliver it but I've always experienced especially with once things are done staining some things will shift some things need to be tweaked and that's much easier to do in my shop than at someone's house also at this point I could put um, the hardware in these are just wooden wooden poles these are nice. I got these on Amazon. Instead of the threaded screw, they have um, they have hardware inside, so it's actually a nut. And I use my laser level to align all these, and I could put those in place as well. So that's what those look like. I was happy happy with the way that th that that turned out. You could see what I was saying before with the underside of this with the pointed screws. I'm going to take all of those out and replace them with nuts. You can see the nuts are a little bit nicer. I could really ratchet down on those and get those um, in place because I didn't want thread. Not only does it look sloppy, even though no one's ever going to see the underside, I didn't want they get have a cat or something crawling under there and, and getting poked. And then for the list, once again, this one I actually put double-sided tape on, which was a little bit easier of a process than my original process. I just realigned the screws, put that in place. And then for the smaller lift, you could see it works so much nicer with those two connected to this one base versus the sides, which is where I originally had it. And I could mount that in place. And then once I have the marks for that, I put my base in. I marked on the base and then I could attach my wooden base to, to this base. I know there's a lot of attaching and bases going on, but this, this table, this coffee table had a lot of components. 
And the problem is, like I said, there's no way to lock these. And when they're cantilevered, there's too much weight on them. And then once again, I used I used pocket hole screws for this. They're not the prettiest, but for something like this, it's going to hold this the, uh, the best. And then in order to get underneath the other side, that they, they give you that pocket hole screwdriver bit, but I have a smaller one so I can get into spots that that, that longer bit won't allow. And then all these tabletops and everything, they're all going to be detachable so that I can move this. Now the backside corner didn't have anything to set on, so it was a little bit too low. I took a scrap piece of red oak, I raised it to where I wanted it, and then I screwed that in place. And then obviously that is also going to be uh, stained and clear coated to match. You get a good view of that oak edge I put on these tabletops in, in this shot as well. And then this will lower in place. And I didn't get any photos of this at the customer's house. I kind of lived in the woods, so the room I put this in was rather dark, and I don't have lighting or anything for my camera, so the photos turned out terrible. So this is really only the shots I got of it um, in, in the shop. And then to move it, like I said, I took pretty much everything that was easily to take off off. I didn't want to take a lot of my alignment stuff off because I'd have to realign all of that in the shop. This is just showing you how everything opens and closes once it's all in place. I took basically all the drawers and everything out. The drawer slides, I put screws in them so they wouldn't move. Like I said, I ended up keeping that center piece in place as well. I could take this off of the uh, sawhorses. And then like I said, I just put this on a hand truck. And if you use the rapid sh ratchet strap on a hand truck, um, you can move just about everything. This is cancer leaving five feet off of there and I could lift it up pretty easily and then um, go put it on the back of my truck. And anything, if you have a pivot point, putting it on the truck was easy. I just lowered it onto the tailgate and I could lift up the back with, without a problem. So that is basically where that was at.